All right, we're here in Orlando. We're at David Ramirez Chocolates. If you like the sweets, man, this is what you want. Come on, let's go get this. So we're here with the pastry chef, David Ramirez, uh, at uh, Ramirez Chocolates here in Orlando. Chef, thanks for having us out. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Excellent. Um, what got you into chocolate? Oh, well, uh, who doesn't love chocolate? But when we started uh, competing in these uh, national world championships, we were asked to do a certain type of uh, chocolate. And it was a very high level. We had to do a hand-dip bonbon and we had to do a molded can. So I started with that, and because of that, that pushed us so far into this high level of chocolate making that when I got done with the competitions, it was tough for me to buy something. I wanted to make it. Uh, so I started making chocolates, and that's what basically pushed me into making chocolates. And before this, you were uh, in hotels, restaurants, and whatnot as yep. a pastry chef, correct? Correct. Yep. That's, that's awesome, man. Yep. And, and you know what? It's great when you can get out there and yeah. kind of get into your own, into your own. Yeah, absolutely. What would, what would, uh, what would you tell your younger self uh, today to make things easier for you? Chill out. <laughs> Don't get so crazy. But yeah, I mean, you get intense, you know, you want to push, you want to drive, you want to make, you want to make, you want to work, you know, working 10, 12, 14 hour days and pushing and pushing and pushing. So at that time, you're in this kind of bubble, you know, and you just want to work, 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 work. And you eventually get there if you put the time and work in. But if I were to tell my, my younger self something, now, hey, it's going to all be good. You've got what it takes. Just chill out. Enjoy the ride. Favorite kind of sweets? What, 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 uh, where are you with that? I'm always going to have a chocolate chip cookie. Nice, okay. soft, baked chocolate chip cookie. Homemade, I'm, I'm guessing? <laughs> doesn't have to be as long as it's uh, baked right and uh, it's all good. It doesn't have to be homemade. But a nice, soft chocolate chip cookie right after a meal. I'm always jonesing for one during my meal. I'm already thinking about my dessert while I'm eating my, my entree. <laughs> yeah, strangely, that is a uh, chocolate chip cookies are a thing for me. Um, yeah, it's hard yeah. not to, you know? Keep, keep the box away from me. It's hard not to. It's just, it's just a good thing. I grew up... Uh, Channeling down Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies. Oh my so. God! You're, yeah, stop it! Yeah. Don't, even, don't even go there, man. Because I a can, white box. Yeah, of course. You tear it through it. Stop right? it! Yeah, the little yeah. ones are soft. Yeah, no, man, I got you. I would, I would kill that yeah. if I was like 15 years old. I was, I would kill yeah. the whole box. Yeah. My mother would say, "What, what is, what are you doing?" Yeah. That's what. She, anyway, it was the crack of, of our of our time. <laughs> I think you're right. Okay, so you do a lot of retail. You're selling to um, food service, hotels, and, yeah. and uh, restaurants alike. Um, what's your, what is your most sought after item? Um, when it comes to chocolates, uh, we sell a lot of uh, key lime, passion fruit, almond brownie crunch, salty caramel. Uh, those are some of the popular flavors on our chocolate side. Macaroon side, it's gonna be things like birthday cake, strawberry cheesecake, s'mores, cookies and cream. We do, we do a lot of fun American flavors. I'm, uh, you know, growing up and learning traditional pastries is great, but when you're in the United States and you have American clientele, well, American clientele like s'mores. You know, they're like key lime pie, you're in Florida, so why not make a pastry or chocolate or a macaroon that tastes like something you had when you were growing up, just with a little fun to it, a little spin. What is the biggest challenge that you're experiencing right now current events? I don't think they've changed. I think my challenges have always been the same. It's always about trying to stay current. It's always about keeping your staff motivated. It's always about finding products and developing new things. You know, you sell something to a client, they loved it, then they come back and say, what else are you making? So I think those challenges have never changed. They'll never change. Keeping staff happy, keeping them motivated, finding products, making new things, uh, keeping yourself happy along the way. Um, so they haven't changed, you know, COVID might have put a light on some things, but it's still the same challenge. It's just different day. David, 
let's break. I want to go in the back. I want to check good. out what the shop's doing. Yeah. And I can't wait to jump in. <laughs> to have some product. fun. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. All right, here we are at David Muir's Chocolates. Thanks for being with us. We're going to be uh, talking to the macaroon crew today. Every day we're making macaroons. We're making birthday cake and coconut and all sorts of fantastic fun flavors. So come on, let's check them out. I was not disappointed. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> cool. Chef, yes. um, what keeps you passionate about the uh, pastry arts? It's always changing. It's always developing. It's always something new to do, a new kind of flavor, a new kind of trend. But on top of that, it's just, this is cool. I mean, who, 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 who doesn't want to make stuff that they love to make and eat? And it's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Is there a best chocolate Ooh, you know it's like saying is there a best car or is there a best shoe or a best watch i mean everybody's got their preference so and, and, well let's uh, dial it in for production purposes are there there's workhorses there's workhorses that i use to put through my equipment through my rover or through my kettles and then there's chocolates that we love to use just for flavor things that carry a lot of flavor you know typically a little more expensive because the process of them uh, is more, whether it's the bean, how they do it, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's different reasons for different seasons, you know, so, yeah. Favorite beverage right now? Oh, I'm gonna always say a margarita. <laughs> Throw a beer in there, it's good. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's my favorite that, beverage. That may be You're happening today. Just oh, saying. it's always happening. Just, just saying out there. <laughs> It's always happening. It's a daily process for me. You know, there's no lies spoken here. A there margarita are... with a cold beer for it in it. I mean, that's all good. I love it. <laughs> when did you realize that you wanted to get uh, into this business? When did you realize that you wanted to be a pastry chef? I was about eight years old. And uh, we, in my house growing up, you had to walk through the kitchen to get to the rest of the house. And my mom was always in the kitchen cooking. And you know, it smells great. It's great. You walk in making this, making that, and I guess just falling in love with that, you know, the smell. It's always, it's like a warm embrace, right? You smell something cooking, you want, oh yeah, I want, you know? And then I just thought, well, I could probably make a living out of doing that because I see my mom, she's got to do it, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So she's working three times a day, so I'm sure I could, you know, do something. What's your favorite, what's your favorite meal from your mother? My mom was always uh, great making eggs. We, uh, we invented these words, tripletta, you know, but this is, you know, in the 70s. Now tripletta is like, eh, tripletta, my phone's going everywhere. But it was like one of those things we talked about, it was the egg, cheese, and sausage on an English muffin. And that was it. Saturday mornings was pizza because it was Saturday morning, no school, and chow down a pizza, a couple of slices, and then go, go play soccer or something like that. But growing up was always some sort of, uh, egg sandwich or, of course, the empanadas. My mom was from, from Chile and making empanadas at home with either meat or, or fish or cheese was just off the hook, so yeah. You're saying all the right stuff to me. <laughs> you're like, uh, you're, you're talking like the Pied Piper right now. Yeah, exactly. Describe a successful shift. You know, you come in, you accomplish all the tasks at hand, maybe push a little bit more and Everybody's cool doing it, you know. Everybody leaves at the end of the day as they as they arrive, you know, good and good spirits. I think that's super important that you that you build a vibe for people where they work that they don't they don't want to hate coming in. They just want to come in and work and make some cool stuff. So that for me is successful when I see folks that work for me learn, do good, and leave at the end of the day and don't and don't feel like it was the worst place in the world to be. You know? So that's successful. Chef, what is the best piece of advice ever given to you? Oh, that was easy. My dad, you know, dad, words of wisdom, right? He told me, uh, don't be stupid. 
That was it. Don't be stupid. I think you told me that in the eighth grade. It's I, not gonna I be pretty think, good. Uh, and, and that really <laughs> that encompasses everything. everything. Don't be stupid. Yes. So once you start doing something and you think you're getting stupid, stop. Because don't be stupid. I feel like so. you're the same dad. I don't know. It was a man of many words, you know? Don't be stupid. Was <laughs> Excellent. All right, so it is time for mm. walk-in confections. Wait a oh. minute, did I just? Yeah, we read this up then. What? Confessions, confections? <laughs> uh, hey, stay tuned. Chef, thank you. Not Come pleasure. on, let's go do this. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna do some chocolate work. We're just gonna cast a little chocolate in our uh, heart mold and it's gonna show you basically what that is. This is a uh, tempered dark chocolate. So we uh, just go ahead and fill our, our mold. So after I got all the chocolate and all the cavities, Scrape that off. Want to make sure that the air bubbles are out. And then we tap this excess out. Get a little scrape. So now as you see, it's, uh, it's hollow inside. And then we go ahead and we put it flat down like this and get it set up, feels out like that. And this will pop in the refrigerator. Just gotta wait for that to happen. Uh, here we have Sydney, who is our uh, airbrush queen, uh, going uh, spraying Palooza over here. She's spray fast every day. She's in her main gig and she loves the airbrush chocolates and we take tempered cocoa butter and uh, we'll airbrush into our molds. Right now she's doing the, uh, the raspberry champagne. Uh, so it's a nice, uh, it's a nice kind of pink, uh, pink color, if you will. And she'll spray the mold on both sides, make sure it's totally coated. Um, it's also tempered, it's in a perfect temperature. It's the 80, between 84, 86, we're in that temperature. And um, it's a simple airbrush, air gun, and that's it. That's how the magic happens. So you saw me uh, cast some chocolate. I put the mold down so it can set up. And here's one that's, uh, see it's set up now. So obviously I could take this, I would scrape it off and put it in the refrigerator, which I did before. So here's a couple ones that we did before. And here's also some chocolate that I did. But just the basic mold as it comes out, you'll see these these chocolate molds have just come right out. Hopefully the chocolate's done right. And then for example, they'll look like this. Ready? And here we have our raspberry champagne that we made with a ruby red chocolate. Uh, the ruby red chocolate is the, uh, what they say is the fourth chocolate now. You have milk, white and dark, and now you have ruby red. It's a process that took them about 13 years to figure out the fermentation and how to work with the cocoa bean. So after all this work, after all this hard work that we did running around and Carl slaving me around this kitchen, now I can eat chocolate. <laughs> All right, so this is walk-in confections this week. It's a pastry thing. Look it up, okay? All right, Chef, yeah. um, this is about the horror stories of the business, uh, challenges and whatnot. Um, you had something kind of interesting with, uh, what say you? Oh, man, last Sunday I got a call. I was having fun at one of the theme parks, and next thing you know, my freezer's down. Chef, the freezer's off. What do we do? Chef, what's going on? So I'll tell you the story, but I'm, I'm cold, man. Yes, we gotta get out of here. Let's get out of here. So last Sunday, uh, joined myself at the park, having a good time, you know, drinking beer, selling lies, all that stuff. And next thing you know, I get a text from my staff saying, Chef, the freezer's down. Chef, the freezer's down. We don't know what to do. Chef, the freezer's, everything's melting. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm right in the middle of enjoying myself. So now I gotta go back to the chef mode. 
which isn't too far off my beaten path anyway. So I start saying, oh, send me a photo of the, of the, uh, of the generator outside. Send me a photo of this. I mean, so I'm sitting there, you know, a few beers in like, oh, okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, hit this switch now. No, no, hit it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it one more time. All right. Call me in five minutes. <laughs> but all this stuff is happening and I'm like, again, really? So in the end, and by the way, the freezer works. It's, it's, absolutely, oh, it's absolutely rigid great. in there. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like you're never off the clock. Oh, no. The, the truth is, uh, especially ownership of restaurants, pastry shops, the whole, the whole nine yards. You don't know it's, it's a 24 hour business every day of your, the rest of your life. Right. Yep. I and mean, that's kind of what oh, it is. Yeah. So that's just one of the stories. So in this segment, you know, we kind of always talk about, talk to the audience and I let them know like, Hey, you know what, yeah. if, uh, your order, your place in order, and maybe it's taking a little bit longer than usual, be cool. You know, chances are, you don't know what's going on. Uh, in the back yeah and uh, oh, we yeah. should all kind of be cool if you see uh if you see mr david give my hats off you know like hey good job glad the freezer's working you know that sort of thing <laughs> chef thank you no very problem. much and i got more stories so next i know time you, i will i have plenty <laughs> yeah and by the way we're having an off-camera conversation there might there might be some time for that too oh yeah we got a lot of good we got a lot of good times yeah <laughs> and maybe over a beer as yeah. well so chef, thank you thank you man appreciate you